Hi guys and welcome back to my channel and also welcome if you're listening to this on the My Invisible Story podcast. So I wanted to talk about how to stop blaming yourself for narcissistic abuse. So if you're wondering how to stop blaming yourself after narcissistic abuse, you're not alone. This is a type of question victims of narcissistic abuse ponder on quite a bit. Now firstly, I just want to clear something up. The word blame isn't the word that I personally like to use. It insinuates victim blaming and shaming, in my opinion, and that's not the road that we want to go down or keep going down. So I'll explain why a bit later. So narcissists tend to abuse in a gradual, subtle way with their victims being brought under control very methodically. They know exactly what they're doing. Um, Having done it many times to many people previously, they've got it down to a fine art, you could say. So today I'm going to explain how to stop blaming yourself for narcissistic abuse. So if you go back to the beginning of your relationship, it didn't look like abuse, did it? In fact, you could describe it as a loving situation where you were admired and put on a pedestal, which we call the idealization phase. So they were in effect, in effect grooming you for what was to come. Hence the lovely promises, which were actually lies, the gifts and telling you everything that they know that you wanted to hear. They paint themselves as your perfect guy or girl and you feel like all your dreams have come true. So this is how the narcissist gains your trust in the beginning stages of the relationship and we all know that trust is a foundation of any good healthy relationship and in order to break any trust you have to have built it in the first place. So once they have your trust They've then laid the foundation on which to build their tower of lies, deceit, manipulation and control and neglect. So self-blame in your decision making. Once they have your trust, they slowly start breaking you down, one degrading comment or act at a time. Now, you may not even realise what's happening because they'll be quick to mask it with a joke or gaslight you into believing it's your fault. You'll probably also be isolated, so you have no one as a soundboard to question their behaviour. And over usually a long period, you'll be blamed for everything and will accept it because you've been conditioned to believe that that is a reality. Now, the narcissistic conditioning you experience doesn't just go away once a relationship ends. As with healing, it takes time to recover. So over time, you start thinking that you've betrayed yourself in many ways, Because at the very least, you trust yourself and your own decision-making capabilities. However, now you're doubting whether you can even make sensible decisions concerning yourself. So not trusting yourself ties into everything that the narcissist wants you to believe about yourself. If you don't even trust yourself, do you see how easy it can be to also blame yourself for everything and believe the narcissist when they say that you are to blame? So I just want to go into how trauma bonds play a part in self-blaming. Now, trauma bonds are initiated in the beginning stages uh, by intermittent love bombing from the narcissist. So that's in the idealization phase I mentioned earlier. So i.e. the love bombing phase where they groom you by giving you their all, making you feel like you were special to them and that they were everything that you could have wanted. Now, once they had you where they wanted you and gained your trust and confidence, the abuse began. They would give you breadcrumbs of affection sprinkled in between the moments of abuse and the cycle continued. So by the narcissist continuing and repeating the cycle, it fuels the abused person's need for validation from the abuser. On top of that, they'll also make them believe that their behaviour is the norm. And the longer this goes on, the deeper and stronger the bonds become with the abused, empowering the narcissist with their need for their constant validation. So this creates a very unhealthy and dysfunctional dynamic in the relationship where you become conditioned to accept the abuse because, you know, they're not always that bad due to the love bombing and the breadcrumbing. So the victim experiences cognitive dissonance, which is the state of having inconsistent thoughts and beliefs because the narcissist flitters between two behaviours, abusive and then treating you somewhat nicely. So you justify the abuse with the fact that they are nice sometimes. 
It's also important to take into account any past traumas that you experienced, especially in childhood, because that creates a blueprint in our subconscious mind and our responses come from that place. So having awareness of past traumas can help understand why we feel that we can accept dysfunctional relationship dynamics. So I just wanted to go over the fact that a narcissist never ever blames himself. You'll never ever see a narcissist put their hands up and take accountability for anything. It will all be your fault. The abuse will be your fault, nothing to do with them whatsoever. And this is why it's so important to get a grip on not blaming yourself. By doing so, it's like double torture. On one side, you've got the narcissist blaming you for everything. Then you're not only taking on their protection and owning it, but you're also blaming yourself on top of that. So in order to get yourself out of this thought process, uh, it's helpful to find ways to stay grounded in your own reality. And I discuss this in another article. If you go on my blog, it's called Fantasy or Reality. And I've also got it on my YouTube channel too. So this is where I discuss how to get out of the narcissist's reality and back into yours. The narcissist lives in a fantasy world. <clears throat> you can't make sense of it. You can only make sense of things when you're grounded in your own reality. So it's best not to talk to yourself expecting the narcissist to say, yes, it's my fault. It's not going to happen. So anyone who's experienced narcissistic abuse will know that we ask ourselves questions, a lot of questions afterwards, after we've got out of this situation, uh, we go back and we ponder. And a few questions you might have asked yourself is, why did I trust them more than I trusted myself? And why did I settle for breadcrumbs? Why didn't I see my worth? Why didn't I see the red flags? Why did I give them so many chances? Why did I need their validation? Why did I try so hard to make them love me? Why did I work so hard to stay in an abusive relationship? And why did I stay so long? So that's a few questions that you might have asked yourself. And these, some of the questions I hear a lot of people that have experienced narcissistic abuse ask themselves. And the questions sort of infer that you're to blame, but in them, there's also some glimpse of self-reflection. Also, it may be the case that you actually resent putting yourself in the position. You may resent staying there rather than actually blaming yourself for the abuse. So answering some of these questions can help us come to the awareness of what's really at the root of the issue. Yes, the narcissist inflicted awful abuse on you without question, but it's also important to ask ourselves what part we played. As much as we don't like to hear it, we played a part in that uh, abusive dynamic. So how do you turn self-blaming into self-awareness? Now, as I mentioned earlier, you won't find the narcissist being remorseful or taking accountability. And here's where you take control. Self-accountability means you're able to look at yourself and say, on a deeper level, what caused me to feel that I could or should accept this type of behaviour. Leaving the narcissist out of it for a second, just ask yourself, what are my beliefs about myself? So you can use these questions that you've been asking yourself to learn to grow and change those negative belief patterns. They can also help you to pinpoint your own wounds like child trauma or abandonment issues, negative self-image, negative self-esteem self-love issues or inner child wounds. So I just want you to remember that you're in no way responsible for someone else's behaviour. All you're responsible for is how you choose to proceed in life and moving into a better future. Now, I don't expect what I've said to suddenly cause you to stop blaming yourself for the narcissistic abuse that you endured. But what I will say is that it was not your fault. You didn't cause or allow yourself to be abused. Yes, there were reasons you endured the abuse long term. And that's why I say it's important to do some self-reflection. It's a case of looking at things from a different perspective. How can you use the way you feel about the abuse as a stepping stone to greater self-awareness and healing? 
how can you use the questions that you can ask yourself and the rumination to figure out what triggers that you have and where your point of pain is? How can you use all of this to heal past traumas and unhealed inner wounds as a preventative measure from going through all of this again? Now, the narcissist motive is to blame you for everything and make you believe them and simultaneously drain the life out of you. But please understand that you are not to blame and you are in control of rewriting the script, changing the narrative and turning self-blame into self-awareness and healing.